Hey, Lutvi Zulfikar here and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about a recent controversy surrounding a comedy skit involving the comedians Chucky and Retan Muslim. And not only that, but also I want to talk about the implications that it brings regarding the limits and the ethics, if you will, of comedy itself. So yeah, I, I watch a lot of uh, stand-up comedy. Most of it I get in Netflix. I, I follow many uh, stand-up comedians uh, ranging from uh, Jim Jeffries, uh, Ricky Gervais, um, Trevor Noah, Dave Chappelle, George Carlin, uh, Sarah Silverman, Hannah Gadsby, you name it. For a lot of people, comedy acts as a kind of a sanity check because um, it helps them laugh off the um, past experiences that were hurtful or traumatic to them, for example. I find this particularly true because I think that comedy has this uh, unique ability of helping people address their deepest vulnerabilities and to also address uh, the shitty things that happen around us in such an, an open and comfortable way. But another thing about comedy is that it is also such a powerful tool for criticism. And this is what probably makes you know a lot of people have have trouble with comedians because um, comedians have held a, a traditional job as being the watchdogs for bullshit, if you will. Oppression, uh, racial and sexual discrimination, hypocrisy, unfair treatment in the system, whatever, you name it. The mainstream media doesn't normally talk about this, at least not in a cultural sense. And so there is a void where these discussions can take place and uh, stand-up comedy or comedy in general provides a perfect platform for those kinds of discourse uh, to manifest. Now, I'm not saying that that um, stand-up comedy or comedy in general is effective in changing people's minds because usually uh, people already have settled on a position in whatever issue they care about. But usually comedy can inspire someone who already holds a belief about something to actually act on it. It can also bring um, low salience issues uh, into discussions that happen in the public sphere by highlighting uh, taboo topics or things that we don't normally talk about or afraid to talk about. But then the consequence of this is that um, I mean, it has the potential to make a lot of people offended. So it kind of begs the question, where do you draw the line when it comes to comedy? Should there be a limit to how far comedy can go? And when I say limits, I don't mean legal limits. I don't think that someone should be jailed or criminally charged uh, just for saying their mind. I will always defend the principles of free speech as I have uh, continually done so in a number of my past videos uh, to the point that I'm quite frankly tired of talking about it. My question is more about is there a point where a, a, a delivery of a comedic content becomes relatively of course inappropriate. So my short answer is that no, there shouldn't be any. I think that no subject should be off the table when it comes to comedy. Because the moment that you restrict a certain topic because it is, uh, I don't know, sacred or sensitive to you, it also gives a justification for other people uh, to do the same about topics that are sacred to them. And if everyone does that, then in the end, there's nothing to joke about. The nature of comedy as a powerful tool for discourse immediately crumbles to the ground. A comedian should be able to take you to taboo places where otherwise you wouldn't have even thought of doing so. If they just circle around on safe issues, then what's the point? You can just think about it yourself. So in this sense, I think that um, it's okay to joke about uh, race, it's okay to joke about religion or any other topic that falls under the umbrella of uh, Sarah. I even think it's okay to joke about rape because to me, performing a joke about rape doesn't necessarily strip away or deny victims the valid misery and pain that they suffer. Now, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to say that making a joke about rape is always okay. I'm merely suggesting that the performance of a comedian should always be judged not based on what subject or topic they're touching, but instead how they craft and deliver the joke itself. Because a rape joke can of course be good if it makes rapists and perhaps the patriarchal culture of victim blaming the prime target of their punchline instead of victims themselves. With that being said, of course it's much more delicate and difficult for a comedian to ethically pull off a rape joke. It requires there's a much higher level of skill and intelligence to pull off a joke like that compared to a joke about other relatively safe topics. Some good examples that come to mind, for example, a Comedy Central skit by Amy Schumer that addressed uh, rape culture in colleges, or perhaps a stand-up routine delivered by Dave Chappelle that talked about how difficult it was for men to talk about male rape, and how the traditional notions of masculinity have suppressed the willingness of men to talk about it in public. 
Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the case surrounding uh, the Indonesian comedians Choki and Tretan Muslim. For those of you who don't know, these two comedians basically made a video. To be precise, a cooking video where they attempted to mix pork, which was haram, of course, in Islam, and also dates, which have been considered fruits that possess significant importance in the history and culture of Islam. And people say that the mixing of these two ingredients were blasphemous. But to be honest, to me, I think that's a whole lot of bullcrap. I mean, they made no direct religious insult to Islamic doctrine or, or scripture and people were calling for them to be prosecuted just because they touched the subject of religion saying that religion is a sacred uh, topic and should not be made as a subject of a joke. But okay, let's talk about religious jokes. One would say that religious jokes are a whole nother level of sacredness and sensitivity compared to other jokes, even such as racism or rape, don't you think? Well, my argument still hasn't changed, still no. Because first of all, uh, if you dare to objectively implement censorship on jokes about religion, then consequently, the very first entities that would be put to jail are religious books themselves, because inherently religious doctrines insult each other, right? The second thing is that the moment you make religion off limits to comedy for fear of offensive content, uh, you also make off limits the various valid, constructive, and well-deserved criticism addressed to the hypocrisy and inequality of treatment that stems from the unethical implementation of religion in society. Some examples of past routines performed by comedians that precisely and perfectly highlight the point that I'm trying to make are, for example, criticism addressed to the child molestation scandal that riddled the Catholic Church. And what's What's meant to happen when you die and go to heaven? You see a big bright light. All your dead relatives. Hello, granddad. Hello, uncle who used to touch me. How did you get up here? Oh, that's right. You used to work for the church. Or maybe the attempts by uh, various organizations in the US that try to limit uh, science and evolution in the classroom. That defense is always but evolution is only a theory, which, which is true. I mean, it is a theory, and it's good that they say that. I think it gives you hope, doesn't it? That, 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 that maybe they feel the same way about the theory of gravity. <laughs> and they might just float the fuck away. Or perhaps even the hypocrisy by some people when interpreting uh, the teachings of religious scripture. No, I believe in the uh, Garden of Eden and all that. Yeah, oh, oh, premarital sex? No, I think that was a typo. That's open to interpretation. <laughs> So, in defense of Joki Pardede and Tretan Muslim, I understand that uh, faith is such a sensitive issue to a lot of us. But still, I believe that it's crucial for us to have the courage to talk about uh, sensitive issues like this. But, of course, you know, on the other hand, I also think that comedians must also step up their game and be much more skillful and intelligent in, in composing and delivering jokes to avoid delivering the punchline to target innocent people, but instead making the target injustice itself. Because ultimately, my message is that we as members of the human society have a moral obligation to always to evaluate things that happen around us and dismantle dishonest systems and unfair treatment around us and satire and comedy is a perfect platform to do just that so let's embrace it that's it thank you for coming to my ted talk <laughs> do you agree do you disagree are there things that you think i missed uh, if there are um, don't hesitate to jump below to the comment section uh, and as always thank you for watching and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.